What are the apps that could be unlocked if AI was sort of ubiquitous on people's phones? Do you have a sense of that or what would you want to see built? Uh, I, I think what I want is just this always on like super low friction thing where I can either by voice or by text or ideally like some other, it just kind of knows what I want have this like constant thing helping me throughout my day that's got like as much context on as possible it's like the world's greatest assistant um and it's just this like thing working to make me better and better uh there's there, there's like a i know when you hear people like talk about the ai future they imagine they imagine there's sort of two different approaches and they don't sound that different but i think they're like very different for how we'll design the system in practice there's the i want an extension of myself um, I want like a ghost or an alter ego or this thing that really like is me, is acting on my behalf, is um, responding to emails, not even telling me about it, it, it is sort of like it, it becomes more me and is me. And then there's this other thing, which is like, I want a great senior employee. It may get to know me very well. I may delegate it. You know, you can like have access to my email and I'll tell you the constraints, but but I think of it as this like separate entity. And I personally like the separate entity approach better and think that's where we're going to head. Um, and so in that sense, the thing is not you, but it's it's like a always available, always great, super capable assistant executive. It's an whatever. agent in a way, like it's out there working on your behalf. And understands what you want and anticipates what you want is what I'm reading into what you're saying. I think there'd be agent like behavior, but there's like a difference between a senior employee and an agent. Yeah. And, and like I want it, you know, if I think of like my, I think I like of it. Like one of the things that I like about a, a senior employee is they'll, they'll push back on me. They will sometimes not do something I ask, or there sometimes will say like, I can do that thing if you want, but if I do it, here's what I think would happen. And then this, and then that, and are you really sure? Hmm. And I definitely want that kind of vibe, which not, not just like this thing that I give a task and it blindly does for sure. It can reason it has like the kind of relationship with me that I would expect out of a really competent person that I worked with, which is different from like a sycophant. The thing in that world where if you had this like Jarvis like thing that can reason. What do you think it does to products that you use today where the interface is very valuable? So, for example, if you look at an Instacart or if you look at an Uber or if you look at a DoorDash, these are not services that are meant to be pipes that are just providing a set of APIs to a smart set of agents that ubiquitously work on behalf of 8 billion people. What do you think has to change in how we think about how apps need to work, of how this entire infrastructure of experiences need to work in a world where you're agentically interfacing to the world? You know? I'm actually very interested in designing a world that is equally usable by humans and by AIs. So I, 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 I like the interpretability of that. I like the smoothness of the handoffs. I like the ability that we can provide feedback or whatever. So... You know, DoorDash could just expose some API to my future AI assistant and they could go put the order in or whatever. Or I could say, like, I could be holding my phone and I could say, okay, AI assistant, like, you put in this order on DoorDash, please. And I could, like, watch the app open and see the thing clicking around and I could say, hey, no, not this. Or, like, um, there, there's something about designing a world that is usable equally well by humans and AIs that I think is an interesting concept. And Same reason I'm like more handles. excited about humanoid robots than sort of robots of like very other shapes. The world is very much designed for humans. And I think we should absolutely keep it that way. Mm -hmm. And a shared interface is nice. So you see voice, chat, that modality kind of gets rid of apps. You just ask it for sushi. It knows sushi you like before. It knows what you don't like and does its best shot at doing it. I... I it's hard for me to imagine that we just go to a world totally where you say like, hey, ChatGPT, order me sushi. And it says, okay, do you want it from this restaurant? What kind, what time, whatever. I think user, I think visual user interfaces are super good for a lot of things. Um, and it's hard for me to imagine like a world where 
you never look at a screen and just use voice mode only. But I, I can't imagine that for a lot of things. Yeah, I mean, Apple tried with Siri. Like, you could, supposedly you can order an Uber automatically with Siri. I don't think anybody's ever done it because it's. Why would you take the risk of not? Well, well the quality. Phone. To yeah. your point, the quality is not good. But when the quality is good enough, you're a lot. You'll actually prefer it just because it's just lighter weight. You don't have to take mm -hmm. your phone out. You don't have to search for your app and press it. And oh, it automatically logged you out. Oh, hold on, log back in. Oh, TFA. It's a whole pain in the ass. You know, it's like setting a timer with Siri. I do every time because it works really well and it's great works and I don't really need well. more information. Exactly. But ordering an Uber, like I want to see the prices for a few different options. I want to see how far away it is. I want to see like maybe even where they are on the map because I might walk somewhere. I get a lot more information by, I think in less time by looking at that order the Uber screen than I mm -hmm. would if I had to do that all through the audio channel. I like so, your idea of watching it happen. That's kind of cool. I think there will just be like, yeah, different there are different interfaces we use for different tasks, and I think that'll keep going. Of all the developers that are building apps and experiences on OpenAI, are there a few that stand out for you where you're like, okay, this is directionally going in a super interesting area, even if it's like a toy app, but are there things that you guys point to and say, this is really important? Um, I met with a new company this morning, or barely even a company, it's like two people that are gonna work on a summer project trying to actually finally make the AI tutor. Like, hmm. and, and I've always been interested in this space. I, a lot of people have done great stuff on our platform. But if if someone can deliver like the way that you actually like, uh, they used a phrase I love, which is this is going to be like a Montessori level reinvention for how people how people learn wow. things. Yeah. Um, but if you can like find this new way to like let people explore and learn in new ways on their own, I'm personally super excited about that. Um, a lot of the coding related stuff you mentioned, Devin, earlier, I, I think that's like a super cool vision of the future. The thing that I am, health healthcare, I, I believe should be pretty transformed by this. But the thing I'm personally most excited about is the sort of doing faster and better scientific discovery. GPT-4 clearly not there in a big way, although maybe it accelerates things a little bit by making scientists more productive. But Alpha 4.3... Yeah. That's like... But Sam... Th that will be a triumph. Those are not... Like, these these models are trained and built differently than the language models. I mean, to some... Obviously, there's a, a lot that's similar. But there's a lot... Um, there's kind of a ground-up architecture to a lot of these models that are being applied to these specific problem sets, these specific applications. Like chemistry interaction modeling, for example. Does you, you'll need some of that for sure. But the, the thing that I think we're missing across the board for many of these things we've been talking about is models that can do reasoning. And once you have reasoning, you can connect it to chemistry stimulators or so I, whatever I guess else. That, yeah, that's the important question I, I wanted to kind of talk about today was this idea of networks of models. People talk a lot about agents as if there's kind of this linear set of call functions that yeah. happen. But one of the things that arises in biology is networks of systems that have cross interactions that the aggregation of the system, the aggregation of the network produces an output rather than one thing calling another, that thing calling another. Do we see like an emergence in this architecture of either specialized models or network models that work together to address bigger problem sets, use reasoning. There's computational models that do things like chemistry or arithmetic. And there's other models that do rather than one model to rule them all that's purely generalized. I don't know. Um, I don't know how much reasoning is going to turn out to be a super generalizable thing. I suspect it will, but that's more just like an intuition and a hope. And it would be nice if it worked out that way. I don't know if that's like. But let's walk through the, the protein modeling example. There's a bunch of training data, images of proteins, and then sequence data, and they build a model, predictive model, and they have a set of processes and steps for doing that. Do you envision that there's this artificial general intelligence or this great reasoning model that then figures out how to build that sub model that figures out how to solve that problem? 
by acquiring the necessary data and then resolving there's so many ways where that could go like maybe it is it trains a literal model for it or maybe it just like knows the one big model what uh, it can like go pick what other training data it needs and ask a question and then update right. on that um I guess the real question is, are all these startups going to die? Because so many startups are working in that modality, which is go get special data and then train a new model on that special data from the ground up. And then it only does that one sort of thing. And it works really well at that one thing. And it works better than anything else at that one. You know, there, there's like a version of this. I think you can like already see when you were when you were talking about like biology and these complicated networks of systems. The reason I was smiling, I, I got super sick recently. And I'm mostly better now, but it was just like body like got beat up like one system at a time fought like you can really tell like, okay, it's this cascading thing. And, uh, and that reminded me of you like talking about the like biology is just these like, you have no idea how much these systems interact with each other until things start going wrong. And that was sort of like, interesting to see. But I was using, um, I was like using chat GPT uh, to try to like, figure out like what was happening, whatever, and, and and would say, well, I'm, you know, unsure of this one thing. And then I just like posted a paper on it without even reading the paper, um, like in the context. And it says, oh, that was the thing I was unsure of. Like now I think this instead. So there's like a, that was like a small version of what you're talking about, where you can like, can say this, I don't, I don't know this thing. And you can put more information. You don't retrain the model, you're just adding it to the context here. And but now so, you're getting a. So these models that are predicting protein structure, like, let's say, right? This is the whole basis. And now now other molecules at alpha fold three. Can they, can, yeah, I mean, is it basically a world where the best generalized model goes in and gets that training data and then figures out on its own? And maybe you could, maybe you could use an example for us. Can you tell us about Sora, your video model that generates amazing moving images, moving video? And, and what's different about the architecture there, whatever you're willing to share? on how, make, how that is different. Yeah, so my, on the general thing first, my, you clearly will need specialized simulators, connectors, pieces of data, whatever. But my intuition, and, and again, I don't have this like backed up with science. My intuition would be if we can figure out the core of generalized reasoning, connecting that to new problem domains, in the same way that humans are generalized reasoners, would I think be be doable? It's like a fast um, unlock, faster unlock than I think. I, mm -hmm. I think so. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you, you, Sora like does not start with a language model. Um, it's it, that that's a model that is like customized to do video, uh, and and so like we're clearly not at that world yet. Right. So you guys, so just as an example, for you guys to build a good video model, you built it from scratch using, I'm assuming, some different architecture and different data. But in the future, the generalized reasoning system, the, the AGI, yeah. whatever system, theoretically could render that by figuring out how to do it. Yeah. I mean, one example of this is like, okay, you know, as far as I know, all the best text models in the world are still auto regressive models. And the best image and video models are diffusion models. And right. that's like sort that's of it. strange in some yeah. sense. Yeah. 